my friend and guest, Larry Mazza, back on Series and Cylinders Outcasts. How you doing, Larry? Excellent. Can't complain at all. Everything Great. is wonderful. Good, good. So if those of you who have not seen my interview with Larry, I will put it the original interview in the description. But Larry was a, a former maid member of the Colombo crime family during the time when the uh, mafia was at its height in the 70s, 80s, into the 90s. And he served under some powerful people like um, uh, Greg Scarper and Anthony Scarpati, right? That was his name? Mm -hmm. Scappy. Scappy. Yep. Yes. So uh, we're going to be talking about the good things that have been happening in your life. And then we're going to get on yep. to, after that, we're going to get on to your opinion about what's been happening in Staten Island and Jersey. There was a major arrest mm -hmm. last week. Yeah, I but, read about it. Yeah, me too. Before yeah. that, let's get to what's happening with you. Well, uh, I've got a another podcast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's uh, actually they're flying me out to New York to do it. And it's a British company, England, also mm -hmm. Scotland, that that area that hits about three, three million subscribers. So they're really been around big. It's a, it's, a, it's a real good one for me because I've got some good news. Uh, you know, I paired up with Terrence Winter. And I had Joe Paletto, uh, you know, his partners in the mob TV thing. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the script and he's uh, it's in development and he's working with some networks to get the ball rolling as far as funding and ideas for how many seasons and all of that stuff. So it's made it to the next level where it's actually in the hands of the number one writer, uh, top producer. He may even direct this himself. Uh he, you know, I couldn't be in a better spot. So I believe it's really going to be happening after the holidays. A lot's going to be, you know, signed, sealed, and delivered. Very nice. Now, who is who? Now, uh, for the people who don't know who Terrence Winter is and Joe Paletto, you said his name was, right? Well, yeah. Joe Paletto's been in this business, uh, uh, the, I guess, the show business uh, for many, many years. He may. He also was in Microsoft and made a good, good mark for himself there, but also was part of HBO. Uh, he was spearheaded the uh, HBO Comedy Central from years back. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, he's got that role and he's got some incredible marketing and media connections. He has uh, a production company. He has musical production company. He's just a, a mega successful guy that does a lot. And he's a fantastic guy he's not mm -hmm. you would never know to meet him except when he flies you on his private plane <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah yeah well you know it's it hard to hide but outside of that he and he's very good about putting me in the best hotels that you you can't even imagine some of the places he's booked me in but anyway so that's joe paletto terrence winter is really the number one writer for, for the mob genre right now he's he's written the ones the ones that he was successful with Sopranos, everybody knows that. Wow. Boardwalk Empire. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, he came on about halfway through Sopranos, but he did the whole Boardwalk Empire. He did uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Really? Yes. And we've had some funny conversations <laughs> about that. I'll, I'll tell you one of them in a minute. All right. And he, uh, he was on the Tulsa King. He was brought in because the writer there, who other people know from Yellowstone, um, Taylor Sheridan, I won't get into too much about his personality, but he's not really well liked, but he's good <laughs> with cowboy stuff. He's good with cowboy stuff. He really didn't have the writing for this Stallone part in Tulsa King. So they brought in Terry and he got it to another level and Stallone loved it. And they ran with it and they started doing it. The good thing for me was, I guess this uh, Taylor Sheridan got a little jealous and him and Terrence weren't getting along. So Terrence stepped down. And as soon as he did, mine became number one priority. It was next oh. on his list. So it moved me up. I might have been stuck waiting another year or two for this. Yeah, Tulsa right. But, yeah. Uh, he told me he was stepping down. I took it with a grain of salt. I said, that's something hard to walk away from. You got Stallone. It's a success. Yeah, right. But he did. And now he's doing mine. He wrote the script. I read the script uh, for a pilot, you know, and it's really what I envisioned it to be. A little bit of humor from the guys being together, the normal stuff. Right. Uh, there's going to be some violence because to introduce a guy oh. like Greg, there's no other way. Yeah, right. And yeah, and uh, 
you know, he leaves it at the at the end where you're really wondering where this is all going to go. Right, you know, right, right. I know my story with the affair with his wife and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, I can't even call it an affair anymore because it was out in the open eventually. And it was more than that. It was, you know, there were true feelings. So it lasted 10 years because of that, you know. Right, right, uh, right. But uh, so that's all done. Like I said, it's great. So that's who those two guys are. Okay. I was the one that originally told Joe that with all these TV stations, you got this TV, that TV, up this TV, down that TV, white, black, every kind of TV you could think of. There was no mob TV. Right, right, they right. They put right. it together, and they're mo- it's moving along. That's where I did my talk show. The mm-hmm. only reason we didn't do the third season is because now we're rolling with the life, becoming a series, so I got to be at their disposal, so I can't be off filming a, a talk show. Okay. Uh, so that's why that was put on hold. But uh, now is the life going to, sorry, that, is the, is the no, life going to no. be a docu series or it's going to be an actual show series like the Sopranos? Really? Gonna be, that's there's going to be heavyweights <clears throat> will be playing Greg, myself and Linda. Then there'll be a lot of new faces or faces that we know that it normally in these mob movies uh, that will be playing less about. So I'm going to have a part. Uh, oh. I'm not sure yet who uh, we've, di- I could tell you who we've discussed and I think it would be fun. I could play my father. Wow. Yeah. Yep. And Terry said, you know, the audience would really take to that to see sure. you play your father that told me not to do the things I'm doing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Right. Right. So it would be good. You know, there's other potentials, you know, wild Bill was brought up because, uh, how do I say this without sounding conceded uh it wouldn't be a far stretch of an act we was we had a lot of similarities you know uh, we both were i see well dressed we both always had my hair still always i hope yeah nice. you know we uh we can speak well you know i've been told i'm pretty good looking so he was good looking right, so i mean right. it wouldn't be a hard hard part to play right so right, that right. was one that was brought up but we're talking about other people for other parts too and one of them, and you're getting a lot of this first before anybody. Tomorrow night, this is all coming out, so don't worry. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you got the uh, uh, a name that comes up, and there's pictures of him where he looks a lot like Junior Persico. And really? I had this conversation with him about probably five years ago. I said, you could play Junior Persico. And he looked at me and he said, that's a very I distinguished can. look. That's a that's a yeah. Who you... oh, wait, there's a picture. I'll, I'll I'll hook you up with the picture. You'll okay. you'll you'll be you'll say wow, that's uncanny. Yeah. Okay. Because even when I sent it to Terrence, he said I thought it was who I'm about to say. I right. thought it was him. Okay. And he looked at me and he says, "You really think I could play him?" I said, "You kidding me, Bob?" <laughs> Robert De Niro. Really? To play Junior Persico is a is a is a thought and a you know a certain something that I know. I love, and Terry did lots of work with him, with Scorsese. Right. Uh, I'm hoping Scorsese comes on and at least directs the pilot. That would be great, too. That's, you know, fan- him and, That's fantastic. And him and Ter- yeah, him and Terrence are real tight. You know, as a matter of fact, anything that, almost anything that Scorsese does now, he has Terry write it. So that's a good thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's just been real, really went to a point where, uh, you know, I was I always downplayed it. And I always mm. told people the stars got to align. It's very tough. Right. Very right, tough right. to get over the finish line. You uh-huh. know, but the ones who don't quit and don't say no. And two people told me, De Niro told me, don't take no for an answer. Because he loved it. He thinks it should be there. But a guy like him, he's got probably 20 projects in front of him at all times. Right. So right, what is he right. gonna do? Say, all right, stop production for Larry. I mean, I get right. it, you know. There, you you got to just keep going because somewhere there'll be that fit where they're looking for something, you know. And now with the new streaming thing going on, there's a need for content, and sure. that's why that that strike came about. Because what's happening is big places like Prime, Netflix, they are only interested in subscriptions. They don't care if the quality is good. How many times you go on Netflix and you turn it, you, you look, garbage. turn it off, turn garbage. it off, turn yes. it off. And, f- and you wind up watching something you probably saw already, like Reservoir Dogs. That's you're right. It's it. true. Yeah, that's what I do, too. So they may wind up with a company like, let's say, you know, maybe HBO, maybe 
Hulu, because Hulu's got 60 million, 60 million viewers. Yeah. Where they introduce it. It might even come out on Mop TV mm -hmm. first. Once we get hooked up with somebody like that, with HBO or Showtime. So there's a lot of things happening right now that, you know, I can't do anything about. But uh, but to get the stars finally aligned where it's got to the finish line. Now it's a matter of just, you know, uh, moving forward. That's that's absolutely fantastic, Larry. I'm, I'm really, really happy for you. Did you ever think, I mean, if you really think about, you know, 20 years ago, what, what, what it was, you were sitting in a jail cell, right? Mm-hmm. Well, and now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 25 years ago, 30 years, whatever it is, you were sitting, yeah, 23 booze count. Okay, you, you were sitting in a, in a jail cell, and yeah. would you ever think that you would be this successful outside of the uh, the underworld? Well, I, I, I never quit dreaming about the future, I never quit, uh with the good thoughts about where I'm going to go when I get out, my, my, mm -hmm. my new life. So I, I, I did, but never, I knew I would get back in the business and I opened my gym. Let's say that I knew my book, I would finish it. And I, I knew the story was so unbelievable. I had the people tell me since I was in jail, uh, the jail people, the prosecutors, lawyers, they couldn't believe it. So they all told me, FBI agents said, you got to make a movie out of this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You well, know? it's a very unique story. Yeah. It's not yeah. your typical mafia story. Right. Yeah. Right. There right. is no other story where somebody gets introduced the way you did. It's, it's no. unbelievable. No. And, and uh, there's, there's other people that like, you know, like Nick Pelleggi say it probably could never happen again. Right. 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 You know, and another fellow Lawrence Roller who wrote a book about corruption and horse racing. He was one of the corrupt drivers back mm -hmm. in the day at Monticello and, Roosevelt and Yonkers. Really? So he wrote a book and, he, and I was on his show, but uh, he said the same thing. How could it ever happen again? I mean, yeah, you know, right. it's just unheard of. So, but, uh, but no, I, I always thought that I can get this book out and I, you know, but I thought a big publishing company would take it, but they don't because I was really a nobody. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the big flashy name <clears throat> and I, you know, it's the way I lived my life before, mm -hmm. you know, that's right. why there's still arguments over my status in the family because I didn't go out running around broadcasting it and looking to meet people. Jimmy and I were very low key and quiet. We were happy with our lives. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, uh, oh, I lost my train of thought. Where were we going with that? Oh. Yeah, you were talking about um, uh, that you have to make a movie out of it. Uh, yeah, oh, right. So I wrote the book and I thought a company <laughs> would come and give me some money up front. They don't offer enough unless mm -hmm. you're. Like right now, they'd off, they'd probably offer Hunter Biden five million. Right, 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 right. You yeah, know, right, they'd right. probably offer Trump's kids a few million for their stories. You right. know, they're all worldwide names. For me, I'm gonna tell you what I was offered thirty thousand. I said, right. thank you. I'll keep it, and I'll do it myself. And I would would put my nose to the grindstone and doing book sales and doing the mob talk shows going to vegas that was a big one for me to, the uh mob museum was a great show mm -hmm. got me a lot of notoriety uh but i just kept doing it and selling books on my own i, I surpassed that right i thought right, right, so right. now if this does be oh, so my getting back to your question but i didn't quit i kept mm. going and going and going then when i met the different people i wanted to do documentaries i wanted one done on me and you know People done them on me, but I wasn't part of it. So I wanted to do one of my own. That didn't happen. I just kept plugging away. Next thing I know, De Niro sends out a message that he would like me to be his consultant. I did that. Then I got in a movie with him. You know, and so things just for perseverance. I wouldn't quit. And I still bit, even though it didn't come through. The story never got to the screen yet, but I kept pushing. Waiting, you know, doing everything I had to do, everything I had to do that a, that a co-producer would do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the groundwork, meeting people, signing books, all the publicity. That's part of production. Sure. It's got to get out there. People got to know it's not only about putting up the money. There's a lot. There's blood equity, blood right. and sweat. I got a ton of that in. Yeah. Hours. yeah. So I didn't quit my gym. I started out with a small gym. Uh, actually started out working in the gym, developed clients. Got a good knack for doing what I was doing. I was liked in the town. And I, one thing led to the other. I, next thing I know, I'm training people all day long. Right. So now I says, all right, I got to get my own gym. 
I did it. I had a little help from the family, of course, early on when I first came home. Uh, but from the little help they gave me. Now, your blood got, family, right? Your blood. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. They're right. the only ones that will truly help you anyway. Uh, yeah, right. The rest, it's what's in it for them. So I got like a, you know, with the inside and outside, it's probably 10,000 square feet. So it's a big facility. That is uh, big. You know, we've got a lot of clients. I got a bunch of trainers working in there. And uh, it's that's going fantastic, too. So, uh, that, you know, I, I did believe in myself. I knew I'd come out and I knew I'd make it back because if I never went, chose the direction I chose, I would have been successful in something. Right, right, and again, right. if that sounds egotistical, I apologize to anybody who takes it that way. No, but it's I not. Know myself and... and people that know me know that I'm a driven person. Right. And I even my father used to call me a sore winner. <laughs> when he would coach me in baseball, the Bears, he said, You won the game. I said, Yeah, but I missed two foul shots. That right, you know, right, 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 right. I was just nuts like that. And I still but have to reason. It's it's not it's not conceited or or whatnot or arrogant <clears throat> because I've had this conversation with my oldest brother. Because, you know, we talk about my podcast and whatnot. Right. And I was like, out of all the guys that um, that are on social media now that were phone mob members, I said, there were only two guys that you could tell were more than street thugs and were. And if they if you put them in any situation, they would have, you know, been successful. I said, one is Michael Francis and the other one is Larry Mazza. Well, thank and, you. And, and, you're welcome. And the other guys. And I agree kinda, with you. Yeah, the other guys you could tell they were kind of thugs. They were, they were, you know, they were criminals. You know, <laughs> right. yeah. um, and, and that's pretty <laughs> good, a part of the reason why, and it'd probably be a good segue into what you want to talk about why it keeps falling apart. Because mm -hmm. guys are not happy running a racket. Running a racket isn't easy. I'm talking about a numbers business, a sports business, a horse business, a Shylock business the traditional businesses. Mm -hmm. It's easier to go swindle a, a, a company out of money. It's easier to go infiltrate a union if you're that right. powerful and strong and you can right. go walk in and abuse people like that. It's right. easier and it's faster money. Right. I never right. got into any of that. I was happy with the long-term sports business that I would have forever. Right, right. You know, right, by building. Right. So that's the difference in a lot of, and, and like, for, I'll just go lead into your opening if it's okay. I just, that's I, I want that I had a couple of questions uh, yeah, about but, the show please. before we get into that. Yeah. The first thing is, are you going to be filming in the old neighborhood or has it even come to that yet? It, it yeah, you're going to get the first right here. I okay. heard just today, okay, because I've been hearing a lot of these type of things are filmed now in Toronto or, other places because it's a lot less money. Right, right, right. A lot less because to close down, let's say Park Avenue to do a hit scene. Yeah, right. Is gonna cost the company, the, the production company, literally a million dollars for licenses. Yeah, a freaking fortune. In yeah, Toronto, right. they let you do it for free because they want the publicity. Ah, okay, okay. So, but I heard today that Terrence wants to do it all in New York and New Jersey because ah, okay. he's got it this high esteem his mind is thinking it's worth yeah. all of that so yeah. when i heard that today i got again i got humbled i said wow you know right there you're gonna go probably right to where some of the hit scenes took place mm -hmm. some of the dinners we had i think he likes the appeal of some of the restaurants because he knows the terrence is from my neighbor he went to school across the street from me oh did he really yeah he went to grady Oh, okay. Sure, and sure. That, we, and we're the same age, so we had to cross each other and, you know, walk into school or at the, the diner down the street. Right, you know. right, right. Uh, and he has a law degree. He became a lawyer, but he's doing much better now. Right, uh, yeah, so, right. Uh, bless him. So he was talking about that, and I said to myself, wow, he's really got this uh, high optimism mm -hmm. to already say, no, this is going to New York, because that considerably i mean i can't even put a number on it what that does to the budget yeah i can imagine yeah. right, right big right, there because right. a lot you know but i'm going back to the restaurants you know like he's friends with the same a uh, uh, mutual friend we have was the owners of brennan and car the roast beef place okay i'm not sure if you're familiar with that i don't remember it's, them yeah well it's on avenue and uh neptune avenue the only I'm, roast, the only roast beef place roast I remember beef. is Roland Roast. <laughs> Roland Roast, that's second best. That's second yeah. best. It's on Avenue and Nostrand Avenue. Nostrand, I mean. Okay. And we went in there a lot, and he did too. And I think 
and it's such an authentic old Brooklyn place. I don't think he could get away from that. We're not going to go set up some fugazi place. We got the real deal. Right. Same thing with Nathan's. When we go to Nathan's, we had a yeah. lot of meetings at Nathan's. How do you duplicate that? Yeah. If you want the real feel of what was going on, you know. So that's uh, an incredible are you, positive. Are you going to go back to 13th Avenue uh, and uh, the, the I neighborhood? Would imagine, yeah, well, I've been there so many times already, but yeah. Oh, yeah, that's I, great. Okay. I, I don't doubt that at all. We're probably going to have all those caddies parked right in front of the spot that was the club and us yeah. guys standing out there and coming in and out. And whoever's playing Greg, that we don't know, you know. Uh, I had some ideas. Uh, but I can tell you my idea because it's just my opinion. Did you see the movie uh, No Country for Old Men? Sure, with that? sure. I forget the the crazy guy's name. Uh, yeah, that would be a good but, one. Yeah, that would minute, be a good one. Yeah, You got to think about it now. I mean, in that movie, he has long hair. Yeah. But he has a comb over like Greg did already. Yeah, so that's just right. Short, he has a very deep voice. You put sunglasses on him with or without the mustache. And the deep voice and his stone look, yeah, that and hard he, look. You could clearly play a psycho, that's that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, absolutely. Now, um, I don't know if you guys have talked about this yet, but uh when Terry Twenty did the Sopranos, the original Sopranos, th- there wasn't this push for this whole uh woke nonsense and so on and so forth. So it gave right. it more of a definitely more of a uh a realistic I mean, it was the most realistic show. Uh, I mean that I've ever ever seen or anybody's ever seen. But then when when they did the prequel, they kind of threw this woke stuff in and so on and so forth. Uh, now, we talked about that. Yeah, they, 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 that's there's no place for that. Uh, listen, I, I I don't <clears throat> I don't see how because it's a time piece, you know, it goes back that they can do that. There are ways because let's say this. I'll just throw this out there. This hasn't been discussed, but it's a great question. And mm-hmm. I've had it. I says, look, we can't have Joe Pesci having a boyfriend if he's playing a heavyweight gangster. Right. We can't have him in bed or kissing his boyfriend. It's, it's just, you can't do it. Yeah, okay, right. if People are that way, and that's fine. We don't care. But that mm-hmm. movie, there's no place for it, my opinion, and I don't see how they're going to do it. But, but a lot of wise guys owned what were gay bars years ago. They mm-hmm. own them because they made a fortune. Right, right, right. So right. we can have something like that. You can have where you have a little, if he wants. I mean, that's not my call by no means. Uh, I did date a black girl once. I did, and, and she was Miss Jamaica, so I'm not ashamed of it. She was a knockout. You know, right, she right, won right. a beauty contest. And it's not like I was going to marry her at the time. I mean, it was different you know, in the yeah. late, you know, early 80s. Sure. You know, it was not, you know good for the neighborhood or whatever and again uh, but uh who's gonna say no to Halle Barry right <laughs> right know, right you know so all right so that's a possibility if you want to sprinkle a little of that in I dealt when I was building my business I had ex-teammates from football and basketball that were other races mm-hmm. Spanish black and they were in Coney Island and they got involved with the numbers and the sports business with me okay so yeah naturally we're not forcing that you know right uh it's there we you know and then when it comes time for the legal end of it there was a lot of black prosecutors there were a lot of black fbi agents chinese fbi i remember one day they were on a corner doing surveillance they were making believe they were fixing their car and in, and i laugh about it now i laughed about it then in the book on 13th avenue you, it's, you're really not going to see a black guy and a chinese girl no. like they're married Especially just, then. Those yeah, are back then. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. they're sitting on my corner and in their and they were in their red car that we already knew. Right. And they were like make them leave they were fixing their car. And when we come, they're looking. I mean, they're, they're not sweating. even trying. They're not even trying. It was comical. Trying. I said, yeah. yeah, you should have put you should have had a sign on it. We are the FBI. I mean, yeah, right, you know, right, right. Then right, maybe right. I want to believe that I said it full of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Now, so can you can you tell me what podcast you're gonna be on tomorrow? The name of it. It's Wait. well, I you know it's funny. I don't know the name off the top of my head, but okay. the name of the guy is James English. Okay, so you can look him up if you just Google search him, or uh, that's what I did. And the name it does come up, but and it okay. might be that James English thing, but right, I, right, I really right. didn't need to know that. And you, know, like I said, my wife handles all my yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. This, that end of it, so she may know. But now, are you when you go on that show, you're going to be talking about your life, or you're going to be talking about the show, or you're going to be talking about both? 
Well, probably everything. Probably okay. going to want to know about my background because, again, this is going to be predominantly in England and Scotland. So, uh, I mean, I know I'm known there because there were some English documentaries, but this would be maybe a real big one for this guy. Sure, and sure. Us to get, you know, some much more in depth about the story. So we're going to probably spend it's going to it's going to be two to three hours. Right. So uh, it's in a studio, obviously. And um, well, I shouldn't say obviously, uh, but I would imagine they're going to ask me for my background, how I grew mm -hmm. up, you know, the normal. Right. And right. I'll go through it. And then yeah. hopefully the ending is what's going on today. You know, when sure, I do my sure. speeches or I do uh, any kind of show, I start out where I am today. It's uh, a lot more. It's a lot more interesting when people hear the names of the people I'm around now, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and then I, it, it's easy to say, but you know, the way I got here, and if you watch the mom museum, you'll see that's where, that's where it came up by mm -hmm. accident, because I thought it was a question and answer thing. They told me, no, you're doing a speech the night before. No. Oh, wow. So, so I walked up and down the Vegas strip with Kelly, just back and forth. And I was thinking, I said, okay, I don't know how to do this. And I, formulated in my head next day i got up there and i you should watch it i think you'll enjoy it yeah definitely a, i'll definitely check the it out. mob museum you go to the, the, the website and it's called not so glamorous okay mob museum yeah. not so glamorous. Yeah, i'll actually really i'll, 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 I'll actually have first, it in the description area yeah that's my first uh major speaking event okay and you know i've i think i've come a long way so but people think it was great anyway